Okay, so now let's go ahead and start programming. We're going to make a couple of very, very simple circuits using the IP addresses that we found in, the, in a previous video. So uh, the first thing I need to do when I start to program is, one, I have to click on my workspace here. It's very important. If I'm over here, you can see that this is no longer red. It starts to inhibit what I can actually do in my workspace. So I come over here, select this. I'm going to add a new rung. Okay, every PLC program in RS Logix 500, the bottom line is always end. Okay, this allows your PLC to know when it's supposed to restart its scan at the top. So I click here. There are two ways to put an input in here. We're going to use the examine if the closed instruction, and we'll explain why it has that name in a little bit. But I'm going to click here and it places it right to where I need it to be. The other, time, the other way I can actually do this is I can click and drag. Well, you'll notice on some programs in RS Logix 500, especially on older computers, sometimes you click this and it doesn't appear, then you click twice and then you get two. So what I like to do is just simply drag if I'm unsure, but if I'm on a newer computer, I can just click and make it appear. Then we're going to grab the generic output instruction. Okay, output energize. I can grab, drag this down. Now notice that if I let it go here, nothing happens. What I'm looking for when I'm dragging is for this red box to turn green. This is very important. If it doesn't turn green, it's not going to be uh, positioned there. It'll disappear or get put in the wrong spot. So now I have the simplest PLC program that you can write one input, one output. So I'm going to address this to one of the known inputs that we established last time. So I'm going to do input semicolon, don't put a colon in there, put a semicolon, 0 forward slash 12. This means that it's an input, it's a it's on slot 0, and it's wired to terminal 12, which was our middle green button. Now I hit enter. Before I hit enter, I want to talk about why I put a semicolon there. The reason I put a semicolon there is because if I've tapped the address in wrong, that semicolon will not change to a colon. But if I've typed it in correctly, it now changes to a colon and this little screen pops up. So I'm going to type in, oops, middle, middle green push button hit OK, and this appears above here. Now let's go back to this idea of a semicolon and what the purpose of it is. Let's say I wanted to put another switch in here, and I do I, semicolon, but instead of hitting 0, I accidentally hit O, okay? And then I do forward slash 13, the right green button, and I hit Enter. Now look what happened there. One, the screen didn't pop up asking me to identify it with a name. Now you can actually go into files and set that up so that doesn't happen. So that's not a major concern if it doesn't appear. But the big one is, is look, the colon, the semicolon didn't change to a colon. That immediately tells me that's where my problem is. So what I would have to do is come in here, double click on the black I input address and change this to O. My screen pops up. And if I wanted to give it a name, I could. I'll just put push button here because I'm getting ready to erase it anyway. Select OK. Come here and delete. There we go. Now I'm ready to address my output. So I'm going to do O for output, semicolon for the same reasons as just stated, slot 0, forward slash, and we're going to use the green, uh, the green light, which was 0. Hit enter. This is green pilot light. Hit OK. Now I have my inputs and my output wired. I'm ready to download. And it's the same steps as when we downloaded the blank program. So we select download. Do I want to put a revision note on here? Now I've actually changed. I'm still in my blank program here. So if I want to put a revision note, let's say added. I, O. I hit OK. Do you want to change your processors? You select yes. You're in run mode. You need to go to program mode. No problem. Select OK here. If there's an Ethernet uh, channel configuration, no problem. We hit yes here. 
for do we want to go back into run mode absolutely and do we want to go online and watch it absolutely what's the fun in not doing that right so now what we're going to get ready to do is we're going to get ready to activate our start button and watch how this operates so before i do that i'm going to open up my input data table file right here and my output data table file so I can see them changing so I have my input 12 so I'll highlight that here for you and I'm monitoring these two so you can watch these two right here and you can see how they actually change when I start to activate my button so I'm gonna come over to my panel and I'm gonna activate my green button my data table file is going to change you see how the green has appeared on the screen letting me know that it is now a true statement and then my output has turned on and it's on on the screen again letting me know that it is now true it has gone from a zero to a one and you can see that my data table has changed as well now I can let it go activate it let it go activate it now sometimes in high uh, high-speed processes what's happening on your screen doesn't exactly much ha what's doesn't exactly match what's happening in real life but that's not a big deal at all because the PLC is operating in real time that's just typically delays in the network so now that I know that my programs running I have created my first um, PLC program I can go ahead and go offline here okay and now I can no longer monitor it but just because I'm offline doesn't mean that the program isn't still in the PLC it's still there operating remember at this point once you've downloaded the only thing the PLC the PC is good for is for monitoring at this point unless we're ready to change the program and download something new